we're trying to focus on the type of physical activity that improves your health, that improves your heart. And so we want you to work at a pace, an intensity level where you can just barely talk, carry on a conversation, but not be able to sing, and you need to do it for at least 10 minutes. And so you can do that at 10-minute bouts throughout the day, like at your break from work, just get in a 10-minute moderate to brisk walk and count that toward Walk Kansas Minutes. Walk Kansas is an eight-week K-State Research and Extension Health initiative that encourages people to be more physically active, eat more fruits and vegetables, and incorporate strengthening exercises into their wellness program. Walk Kansas generally begins in mid to late March and runs for eight weeks. Each six-member team picks one of three challenges. The first requires each team member to get two and a half hours of moderate to vigorous physical activity each week. The second requires four hours, and the third requires six hours. The challenges and trails have remained the same for a number of years. However, the virtual trails have changed this year, and participants will be learning about the eight wonders of Kansas as they travel across the state to achieve their goals. On today's Sound Living, the health benefits associated with participating in Walk Kansas. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist Sherilyn Jackson is the state coordinator of Walk Kansas. Sherilyn, another year for Walk Kansas, and the challenges have changed just a little bit this year. Yes, Jeff, they have. The challenge themselves, as far as what we're asking people to do in terms of time and distance, is the same, but the trails have changed. So we're going to talk about that today and how the Kansas Sampler Foundation fits into the partnership here and in, in what people will discover along the way. Marcy Penner is along with us from the Kansas Sampler Foundation, and this kind of dates back to a contest that was done, well, maybe what, 10, 12 years ago? Yeah, it started in 2007. Our goal was to find a way to help the public interact in knowing Kansas, and Dad and I had come up with these eight elements of rural culture when we first started writing our guidebooks, realizing that when you'd ask someone in a town, what does your town have to offer that we could put in a guidebook, so often it would be like a blank look on their face and they'd say, oh, you'll have to go to another town. So we came up with these eight elements that if you ask someone in a town, tell me about your architecture or art or history, they're able to focus and it helps them break down their town a little more quickly and easily, and and then all of a sudden they start seeing that they have things. And we came up with 24 nominations for each of our eight categories plus an overall, and then gave people a little bit of information, and so they voted until we had the top eight in each category. And it really helped them study and look and think, and in some cases look in their own towns to see what they had. And are these eight wonders then from all across Kansas? Yes. We wanted to cover the state. So in the end, we had 216 places that were part of the contest, which then resulted in a Eight Wonders of Kansas guidebook. So it's really a rich archive of maybe, in a way, the best of what Kansas has. Can you run through those eight categories? Yes. Architecture, art, commerce, cuisine, customs, geography, history, and people. So cuisine, of course, is restaurants. Geography is anything in the natural realm. And all of these things are things you can see and do, not just something you read about, something you could actually go see. How did you then work this into the Walk Kansas effort? We've had these trails for a number of years where you go across the state You go across and back, or you go around the state, and I thought, we're missing so much of Kansas by going down I-70. It was just sort of just hit me, like, why are we not changing these up on a regular basis? And so I think I was probably in the Discovery Center, and I saw the Eight Wonders book, and it was just sort of like a no-brainer at that point. I thought, yeah, we need to do this. That would be really cool. And Marcy was so gracious to jump on board and be a partner, so we really appreciate that. Our first challenge, challenge one, which is requiring people to meet the minimum guidelines for physical activity for Americans, and that's to log two and a half hours a week of moderate or vigorous activity. And that trail, if all six team members 
would meet this minimum guideline, they would go for 480 miles. And so I was able to kind of finagle it so that I could get those eight wonders in right at 480 miles on the map when the participants go through that trail, then that's what they're going to explore. So they'll start in Hutchinson and they will learn about a wonder at three or four points along the way, and then they'll hit another one. So there's probably three or four stopping points that explain about that particular wonder, even though they're not quite there yet. And then challenge two is challenge two goes twice that. Yeah, about that. It's logging four hours a week per person. Again, this is the moderate activity, and not just everything that you do, but a particular type of activity. And that's a total of seven hundred and sixty-eight miles. And that trail starts at Troy, up in the northeast part, and it goes down to Elkhart, which is in the southwest part, and it it just meanders along the way. And there are some of the wonders of the other categories in that trail as well. And then our third challenge is a new one also this year, and that's exploring the Little Balkans down in southeast Kansas. And there's a lot to explore down in that area of the state, and one of the highlights of that area is Big Brutus. This requires each person to log six hours per week, and that trail is 1,152 miles. When we talk about doing the trails, is this through an online mechanism? How's it's this all working? online. It's okay. virtual. And so they'll start out, like in Challenge 3 down in southeast Kansas, it's a virtual trail, and they can unlock points along the way. So I encourage people that are in Watt, Kansas, to not just look at where you are at that point, but see what you pass through, because then you'll be able to go back and unlock other points and learn about Kansas that way. And Challenge 3, I didn't quite finish. It ends up in Nicodemus, which is a really interesting area, too. Marcy, did you come up with some of the facts then that are going to be exposed along the way? Well, they were in our guidebook, this information, and Sherilyn, I believe you just took it from there. Yes, yes. Marcy has been real gracious to allow us to use that, and I just want to say that it's a beautiful book. The presentation, the photos, and the rich history and information that's in there is, is really fascinating. It's always fun to learn about your own state because a lot of times we do take things for granted. Yes, we do. And there were so many things that I didn't know as I was paging through the book and that I'm still looking at. And a lot of our Walk Kansas programs also have those books in their offices, and they'll be used as incentives for the participants. This may be kind of something that spurs some summer trips, I would imagine, too, as people learn a little bit more about some of the things that are around the state of Kansas, might make some nice day trips for some folks and a a weekend vacation for somebody else. And some friends and I already have a plan that we we want to actually do the Eight Wonders and go visit them and take several days to do that. So yeah, it's, it makes a really neat way to have a family vacation or just an exploration trip. You were talking about the challenges that they have to go through. What we're looking for is people to put in at least 10 minutes at a time. That's correct. The guidelines are pretty specific. We're trying to focus on the type of physical activity that improves your health, that improves your heart. And so we want you to work at a pace, an intensity level where you can just barely talk carry on a conversation but not be able to sing, and you need to do it for at least 10 minutes. And so you can do that at 10-minute bouts throughout the day, like at your break from work, just get in a 10-minute moderate to brisk walk and count that toward Walk Kansas minutes. There are other activities that people can do, and we're really looking at minutes of activity. Yes, the guidelines are in minutes. And so while we call this Walk Kansas, and we really promote walking because that's an activity that just about anybody can do, there are lots of activities that count. So anything that's going to get your heart rate up to the place and intensity where you can, again, use that guideline. It's pretty easy to do that you can talk but not sing. That's kind of what we're after for moderate. And then vigorous is where you can say a few words but not really have a conversation. So those two types of activity are what we're after. And again, in the 10-minute increments. And people will choose which challenge they want to try and take on? That's right. They do that as a team. There's these are teams of six people, and so they get together with their team. They don't have to do the activity with their team. They can log their minutes independently. But as a team, they need to decide what challenge they want to work toward. And we encourage them to support each other, to motivate, to connect, and to really support each other in reaching the goal. You're able then to log all of this information, and you're also collecting some other information as well. But it does kind of give you a brief look at how Kansans are being active. Yes, and I'm always just amazed at the enthusiasm for Walk Kansas every year. I think the timing of it with the start of spring, people are anxious to get out. 
They look forward to it. We try to make it fun. Research tells us that if it's an activity that they enjoy, they're more likely to continue doing it. So we want it to be something people enjoy and something they can make a part of their regular routine for a lifetime, not just for eight weeks. And it does allow you to start at your own pace and continue to build. I know you've seen the numbers where people start out struggling to get those minutes, and by Mm -hmm. the end, it's not a problem. Exactly. And this year, we've added a new opportunity to do a pre and a post test to assess your flexibility. They're just two simple little tests for flexibility and also a fitness test where you walk a mile. All the instructions are in the activity guide for the program, and it's a one-mile walking test, and then you do it at the end of the program to see how you've improved over that time frame. They can also count minutes when they're doing some strength exercises as well. strengthening exercises, yes. And that's in the guidelines, too, that they recommend that we do strengthening exercises at least two days per week. And then we're focusing this year more on flexibility as well. We'll have some resources and the newsletters that offer proper ways to stretch when you should stretch about warm-ups and cool-downs. And a lot of information that we have on our website, www.walkkansas.org. We have a lot of videos and other resources there, and we'll be adding to that. One of the things that is really nice about this program is the fact that if you've not done much physical activity at all, there's a place for you. If you're somebody who runs marathons, there's a place for you. Exactly. And this year, too, there'll be some places after they, if you reach your goal, I'm not going to tell you where you go next, but they've built in some other points that you can get to. So even though you've maybe made it from Little Watkins to Nicodemus, You can keep on going and see where the trail takes you. Well, that's kind of fun because then you have a chance to really see how far you can go during Mm -hmm. those eight weeks. That's right. Let's also mention the fact that there is, again, a 5K this year. There is a 5K, and it's the 5K for the fight. It's a benefit for the Johnson Cancer Research Center on the K-State campus, and that's May 5. And we're really excited this year because it's Cinco de Mayo, so we have some Fun things planned to go along with that for the participants after they've registered and they're waiting for the event to start. So we're just going to have a good time that day and and raise some money for the Johnson Cancer Research Center. That's a great cause. And also a lot of what we do in Watt, Kansas supports cancer prevention recommendations. And so we tie that all together. I know it's getting kind of close to the start of Watt, Kansas, but there is still some time to register. There is time. Our local offices set their own dates that they'll accept registration or stop taking registration. You just go online, www.walkkansas.org, and you'll find the registration link there, and you can do it online, or you can contact your local K-State Research and Extension office. That's a good point, because not everybody has a team of six you can get on someone else's team. That's right. You can register as a solo, and they will connect you to a team that has the same goal that you're looking for. And this is nice because there's kind of that accountability factor for some of us who sometimes need a little motivation to get out and walk or or be active. That's one of the greatest motivators. We found that from our participants at the end of the program. It's also something that research shows us that that's that team accountability factor that it's pretty easy. Sometimes you get home from work and you just sit down on the couch and you think, oh, I'm just going to stay here. But if you know that your team's counting on you, people have told us that's a huge motivator. You mentioned the fact that there is a lot of information online, and some of that includes newsletters and other things that will also help keep you motivated during this eight weeks. Yes, we post the newsletters from previous program years online. Um, The ones that we will distribute this year will only go to the participants during the program, but you can look at previous issues. There's a lot of good information there. We also share a number of resources through the online system. Once you get into that system where you log your minutes, and we also ask you to record fruits and vegetables that you eat, how many cups of those, and that's another important part of our program. But once you get into that online system, then you can see the other resources that are there. You can chat and email your team. That's all built in to the system. That's K-State Research and Extension Northeast Area Family and Consumer Sciences Specialist and State Coordinator of WAC Kansas, Sherilyn Jackson. Marcy Penner with the Kansas Sampler Foundation was also a guest on today's program. To learn more about WAC Kansas, go to wackkansas.org or contact your local Extension office. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. And this is the K-State Radio Network.